How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. We are looking at Tortoise Acquisition Company today, or Hylion. It's been a while since we've taken a look at it. I did a video, I think a couple months ago, on Hylion when it first kind of got well known. And we're going to go over it today because on Monday, it went up over 12%. And I'm recording this partway through Monday, so maybe it's a little bit below or above that. But it went up pretty drastically throughout the day on some news that it actually was able to ship out some of the first of their product. So we're going to go over that, talk about what the company does in general, and my thoughts on it. So if you don't mind hitting the like button, that really helps out the channel. I really appreciate it. And if you want two free stocks with Webull, you can use that link down below. One stock is worth up to $1,400 as long as you invest $100 or more. So I appreciate it. Tortoise is up, or Shell stock is up, about 13% partway through the day on Monday. And I'm recording this about two and a half hours before the market closes. They came out with a filing that came out on Friday, the previous Friday. And it kind of gives an idea for what happened in Q2. And Hylion was able to begin shipping its first products. So it is still losing a lot of money, operating loss of about $3.4 million dollars interest loss of about $1.6 million, so net loss about $5.5 million. Now they do have only about half the cash that they had at the end of Q1, but they're starting to ship out their first products. And where this all started was Hylion and Tortoise announced a merger back in June that the two companies were going to merge. Tortoise was going to be able to bring Hylion public. So the really interesting thing about Hylion is their products. So what they have is this technology called the ERX. So they are able to take a semi and convert it over using the system to make it much more efficient. So I'll read what the CEO says, or the CEO of Agility says, Hylion's technology tackles one of the greatest pain points for the logistics and transportation industry, how to lower emissions without having to fully replace all existing assets and infrastructure in order to do so a move that is cost prohibitive for most companies. The ERX solution transforms existing fleets and delivers the desired efficiency impact, zero or even negative emissions with significantly reduced operating costs over time. Now, what's this mean? They can take the semis and convert them over, but what kind of numbers does this give them? What kind of cost savings does it give them? If we look at their investor deck, so you can find this on their website, go over to investors. Their range with these ERX hyper trucks is about 1,300 miles compared to, they compare it to Nikola or Tesla. Now, of course, this is coming from Hylion, so you know, you have to be cautious of that, know where the information is coming and what information is presented. Payload capacity says it's 53,000, significantly more than Nikola and Tesla. Now, refuel, recharge time is also lower than Tesla and Nikola, or at least Tesla and Nikola is about the same, about 10 minutes they're saying. The ERX 0 to 60 is about 20 seconds, which is lower than Nikola's, about the same as Tesla's. They are able to increase capacity, increase drive time by a huge margin. Now, they're saying that there's about an $800 billion market opportunity. So they're saying 8 million trucks in operation and projected to grow by about a million trucks annually. So there is a huge market opportunity for Hylion. This is a company that's trying to grow. So they're probably going to have to dilute shares eventually. They're going to have to raise capital. This is not a major company like Tesla or like NIO. This is really a company in its own weight class right now. So you have something like Nikola, which doesn't have a product. They have not been able to sell a product yet. You have something like NIO and Tesla, which are already selling massive numbers. NIO is over in China. Tesla is over here. And I actually made a video on them yesterday talking about some really good numbers that they put up. So definitely check that video out after this video. But they are just in a different weight class. They're, they're really the cream of the crop when it, you're talking about EV companies. You have something like Workhorse, which is in a completely different market. It is in electric vehicles, but they're vying for a huge contract. So they're not like Hylion, where they have a giant market to sell to. Of course, they have a pretty big market, maybe 10, 20 billion. But 
nothing compared to the $800 billion market for semi-trucks. Now, if companies can convert their semi-trucks too, that is huge. I mean, if they're able to take something and put in a lot less capital, especially if they already have the trucks, that's great for Hylion. That's great for the companies. I think that they're going to do really well. Now, just trying to give my price prediction, I really have no idea where Hylion is going to go. Anyone that says that they do is crazy. You don't know where these companies are going to go from here. This is about an $800 million market cap now, maybe 900 or a billion by the time that you see it. But there is a lot of potential here. It's definitely a growth stock. So if you're looking to get into the EV space, take a look at the company, go through their earnings reports, go through some of their projections and their investor stacks, learn as much as you can, and then realize that there is a significant amount of risk. This is still a small company. They're trying to grow. There are large competitors like Tesla, even Nikola, who, you know, they aren't, they haven't made a product, but they are a very large market cap. They're able to put a lot of money into their R&D or even other companies. Like if some other car company wanted to start making more semis, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that have a lot of money that could just throw money at this and probably come up with something. But Hylion seems to have some really good technology and I think that they're gonna be able to sell a lot of their products if they're able to scale efficiently. I have not bought Tortoise or Shell or Hylion, whatever you wanna call it. I haven't bought them yet. I wanna see the merger actually take place. I wanna see some more good news happening, like maybe a big contract or something like that. Of course, I can only invest in so many different stocks. I already have too many stocks as it is. If you look here, I go over my $30,000 investing portfolio and I'm just 24 years old, but I have too many stocks right now. I have too many shares of different companies. I really want to whittle it down. So even when I'm excited in a company, I have to I have to weigh it versus my other companies and see what I'd rather invest in, what I think is a good use of my time because I can't keep up on 40 different stocks very well. It's very difficult. So I have to kind of weigh that all out and determine whether it's worth it and whether I think the company is gonna be a better value than other companies. For example, I have Tesla. They went up drastically yesterday too. They're up over 100% since I bought in. Do I really wanna miss out on investing in some company like that to invest in Tortoise or Shell? You know, it's it's hard to weigh that. So definitely let me know your thoughts below. Are you an investor in Shell or in Tortoise? Are you excited for the merger? When do you think it will happen? And are you invested in some of these other EV companies too that I laid out, NIO, Nikola, Tesla, Workhorse. I'd love to hear it. I'm really excited in Workhorse too, and I own some of their shares. So I'm invested in the electric vehicle space already. But let me know your thoughts. I appreciate it. Thank you for using those links down below and hitting the like button. I will see you in the next video. Bye.